So let's look at the full process for finding all solutions to a linear Diophantine equation. So we're going to start with 39x plus 66y equals 24. Now, if you just write down an equation like that, it might not have any solutions. And we know that when it won't have solutions is when the GCD of the coefficients on the left-hand side, the 39 and 66, if that didn't divide 24, then we wouldn't get any solutions. But in fact, it's not too hard to see the GCD on the left-hand side is 3. If it was hard to calculate it, we of course we have the Euclidean algorithm for that. Um, but it does divide, and so the first thing we do is we just divide through by that common factor. And just, just a usual algebraic simplification, just get rid of it. Get rid of a common factor on both sides, and um, then you never have to deal with that again. So from now on, it's really going to be this equation that we're solving, because it is exactly the same solution set as this. So we're never going to go back to this one. We're, we're going to come back to this one. Now, there's a different thing we have to do as the next step, and that is change it to a different equation that has a different solution set. And that is, instead of considering this equation, we're going to consider the one where we solve equal to 1, because that's where, that's our total home base, that's the, the best connection with the Euclidean algorithm, um, and it records the fact that these guys have uh, are relatively prime, so when we do the Euclidean algorithm on these things, it's going to get to 1. It's not going to get to 8. So we're going to solve this thing, and then we're going to go back to this one with a pretty easy step. Okay, so there's definitely a bunch of steps to this that we've put together in this chapter. So let me just draw a picture of this, get a, a graph of this. Um, here's what the graph of this thing looks like. Okay, and you might notice it seems to go through a grid point at minus 5, comma 3. Now it's hard to tell sometimes from a graph whether it really, really exactly goes through the grid point, although it's pretty easy to check yourself. That's going to be a solution. But let's see how the Euclidean algorithm does that. This is pretty much review of of uh, the earlier process. But we use the Euclidean algorithm on 22 and 13. So 22 is 1 times 13 with the remainder 9. You can solve that for the remainder and just have that um, sitting there waiting to be used in a minute. 13, one, uh, 9 goes into that once with the remainder 4. We can solve for the remainder, 13 minus 9. 9, well, 4 goes into that 2 times, remainder of 1, and so 1 is 9 minus 2 times 4. So now we're going to just take 1 and we're going to progressively express it in terms of numbers that are going higher up the chain until we get to the numbers we really want. So it's 9 minus 2 times 4 like we just had. We substitute in that the 4 can be expressed in terms of 13 and 9, namely it's 13 minus 9. We go ahead and expand and simplify. 3 times 9 minus 2 times 13, yes, 27 minus 26, that's definitely 1. Now that 9 can be expressed in terms of my original numbers and I'm almost done. So it's 3 times the quantity 22 minus 13, minus 2 times 13, expand and simplify, and you get a not terribly surprising answer, 3 times 22 minus 5 times 13. Now remember, x was the one that was paired with the 13. So our solution is x is minus 5, y equals 3. So that's a big deal. That's, that's the core of the whole thing, and the rest of it is building up to the full thing we want. So the first thing to do is to go back and say, well, we really did want this equation, 13x plus 22y equals 8, with not a 1 on the right-hand side but the 8. But we know how to fix that. We know that the sol one of the solutions is gonna, just going to be take the x and y and multiply by 8. That's certainly going to make the left-hand side bigger than 1 by a factor of 8. That's going to turn into 8. So we multiply the solution by 8, and we get xy is minus 40, 24. Okay. So... That gets us one solution of this Diophantine equation. The new part is getting all the solutions. But that's a really pretty simple procedure. Now, it's really essential that in order to do this, we really have divided out by the common factor, and we got it as an equation where the coefficients on the left-hand side are relatively prime. I'll talk about why that is in a minute. Um, so we can add, the, the key is simply if we add, say, 22 to x, We'll be adding 22 times 13 here. Then if we sub simultaneously subtract 13 from y, we'll be subtracting off the same 22 times 13. And you can do that for any multiple of 22 added to x if we were to subtract the same multiple of 